Kane Sport TV, we're here with Alonzo Highsmith, the newest member of Mario Cristobal's team at the U. And uh, so it's a big day. It's a big day for you. It's a big day for Mario. It's a big day for the University of Miami football program. It's a big day for the fan base. And um, the reason I say all that is because when things have been right at Miami, when the competency and the quality of the people in the building have been right, going back you know, many decades now, Miami football has been on the top of the game and uh, clearly, you know, rounding out the team with, with, with us, with yourself and, and everybody else that Mario's put together, Miami football is headed in the right direction. Yeah. You know what? I, shoot. I've been in NFL 25 years now in the scouting departments and I've been in, I've done everything in pro football you could do from a personnel side. And so you always have an eye on Miami. Um, Miami's always been a passion for me. Um, I have a great deal of respect for the University of Miami, the city of Miami, the people in the city of Miami. And I've always been part of Miami from high school to college, every aspect of Miami. And um, it's a place that I love. Um, I think everyone knows how we all feel about the University of Miami. And, you know, it's hurt for the last 20 years watching Miami football fall and almost get there get better than, and then it hasn't succeeded the way we've all wanted it to succeed and, and and i come to miami right now in a very humble manner i'm not coming i'm not the savior by any means um i wasn't the savior as a freshman when i came to miami but i knew i had an opportunity to be part of something special and to be part of something special is what i've always been interested in life and um, I felt like the timing was right to come back to Miami right now. Um, I wanted to contribute to something I think can be special. And, and you know, meeting Dan Radakovich, knowing Mario for all these years from scouting when he was at Alabama, then at Oregon. And we know a lot of the very similar people. And we believe in a lot of the same principles. And it's going to take nothing but hard work at University of Miami. Um, like I said, I, 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 you know, people think of me as Miami Brad, but I, I've always been a pretty humble guy and, you know, I'm down to earth and that's always going to be my approach, how I do things at Miami. I'm looking forward to working with Ed Reed and all the coaches and all the personal personnel staff. And hopefully I can bring something to that staff to help make us better. Um, I was there um, way back when you walked out of Miami Columbus and mm -hmm. came to the University of Miami and you just drew an analogy, which I think is really appropriate because back when Howard Schnellenberger recruited you and recruited Melvin and, and mm -hmm. it was such a big deal that the local South Florida kids were coming to Miami, yeah, it was a very similar type situation. Um, and unfortunately, Miami is kind of back in that place now, but, mm -hmm. but um there was a, it was an open, the, the world was an oyster. Miami he, w w was trying to accomplish things that hadn't been being accomplished. And you guys were considered pace setters for that. Yeah. Well, you know, I always tell people this when you talk about Miami when I was coming out of high school. My senior year in high school, I had no thoughts about Miami football. Um, my goal was to go to Michigan or Notre Dame or Oklahoma or something like that. And, um, because I really didn't know much about the University of Miami. And um, if it hadn't been for Paul Damari and Coach Lavelle, I probably wouldn't have visited Miami. Um, I, thought, I kind of thought at that time Miami really didn't have much to offer. I knew they were they played football, but I was interested in playing what I thought was a bigger stage, um, the Rose Bowl, the Orange Bowl. And I hadn't seen Miami in an Orange Bowl, but – I got an opportunity to meet Howard Schnellenberger and we had some great conversations. Then I started visiting the school, started going to practices, watching, and Howard sold me on a vision of what the University of Miami could be. Not what it was, but what it could be. And that really enticed me as a young man. He told me that, yes, you could go to Alabama, Yes, you could go to LSU. Less, you let, of course, you could go anywhere you want and go to school and be a good football player. 
But if you could come to Miami and be a great player here, we'll change the course of history. And that intrigued me. And, you know, my first college football game I ever been, I ever went to the United States was the University of Miami versus Florida in 1981. I believe it was Jim Kelly in the Orange Bowl. And there were 72,000 people in the stands. And I saw a team come out and smoke. And I didn't know who they were. And they said, it's the University of Miami. Because I was just from Montreal, Canada. And I was intrigued by Miami, but I still didn't know much about University of Miami because I hadn't really seen him on TV before. Um, you know, I remember my mom was adamant about me not going to Miami, you know? So that was a big battle in our home. And, you know, you know, when Texas A&M tells your dad, your son's never going to play in a bowl game, Notre Dame tells your mom, you're never going to play in a bowl game. If you go to Miami, they've been on probation and all these sorts of things. And then you go on a recruiting trip and you meet, Melvin Bratton, Jerome Brown, Winston Moss, and Brian Blades, and Howard Schnellenberg is telling you, Alonzo, you can be the cornerstone of making this a national figure at the University of Miami. And I said, how, how am I going to do that? And he said, look, we're in South Florida. If I can keep the best players in South Florida, we will dominate college football. And we all looked around on a recruiting visit and said, Maybe this guy's right, Howard Schnellenberger. Maybe he knows something we don't know. And Lord and behold, I signed with Miami. Melvin Bratton signs. Jerome Brown signs. Winston Moss signs. Brian Blade signs. Danny Stubb signs. All these guys signed with Miami. And then Miami starts picking off parts of the best players across the country from New Jersey and California. Add all this into the mix. And something started brewing and we knew we had a winner. We knew that at that point, what Howard Schellenberger was telling us was the truth. And that's how it all started for myself. And I say this to people, people will say, oh, Miami's just, Miami's living in the past. They can't know. You have to live in the past in order to move forward. And you have to respect the past in order to move forward. I don't live in the past. You'll never hear me say we did it this way in the past. But will you? What? But what you will hear me, hear me say is we can't replicate the past, but we can make it better. You know, I, I think anytime you look at the car industry or anything that's innovative, and yeah, we can't replicate building the car, but we can make it better. You know, we can do things better at the University of Miami than we did it in the past. It's a it's a totally new landscape It's um, than when I played college football. And But the good thing is I've been involved in college football the past 25 years. I've seen the rise of schools. I've seen the fall of schools. I've seen schools build facilities where they said they couldn't build. I, I mean, I've seen the evolution of Clemson football, um, Alabama, I, I've been in all these places and everywhere I go, it's been interesting for me for the past 25 years visiting schools because everywhere I go, they ask me about Miami. Yeah. Everywhere I go, what's going on down in Miami? If they ever get this thing fixed right. And that used to intrigue me because so many people used to bring that up to me. I've talked to so many teams across the nation about Miami. I've had coaches ask me, hey, can I, we make our team watch the University of Miami documentary. Would you talk to our team? I go to practices and college kids say, hey, are you the guy that was on that documentary about Miami? Man, we love that. And it's and it, it's kind of been a phenomenon, but it's also been fascinating and interesting, the respect and the admiration people had for a, docu, for a documentary. And for Miami football, I think Miami football was that team that everyone wanted to dislike, but it was kind of cool and you liked them. You, you, you know what I mean? And you know what, man? I'm not coming to Miami as the Pope or anything like that. I'm just coming to be part of the program. The same thing I did at 17 years old. I'm coming with a belief that we can build something special again at Miami.
And to all the kids in South Florida and the parents, I want you to know I understand what it takes to get to the NFL. I understand your dreams. And we can make all of that possible at Miami if you give it a chance and you create an atmosphere where our best players are staying home from the state of Florida. I call the state of Miami. You know, we, we've got to build back the trust in the community. We got to get the city of Miami excited about the University of Miami, but you also have to make the product better. We have to do better playing football. And if we do better playing football, we'll cure all the ills of the past. All right, so the title is mm-hmm. General Manager of Football Operations, though, but, but the title is doesn't really matter no, here to me. I mean, it, it, it's like it's 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 what you're going to be doing. And um, the, the way the university is describing it is that you're going to support all administrative functions of the football program, including budget related items, culture building, program imaging, and that you're going to be working directly with staff members both on and off the field. You're going to yep. serve as a liaison between the administration and the football program, a liaison between former Miami players and staff. You're going to assist with scouting roster assessment, supervise NFL relations. Um, the way they've set this up for you is you're going to be able to touch so many different areas of the football program and use your three decades of expertise um, to support everything that Mario is trying to get done. And, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to have a paintbrush and touch every part of the football program with the kids. I, I was joking with Mario is that I would love to have a big couch in my office. And I want kids to just come by and sit and talk. I, I want to know who these kids are. I want to hear what their dreams are. I want to hear the, 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 about the diversity in their life and what they've had to overcome to get there. And then I want to tell them my story. I want to tell them about the stories of all the great players I've, scouted in the NFL and watch go from from tr- come from a free agent trope Tramon Williams to 15 years in the league and 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 those type of stories and I want them to know that if you listen to me and you trust me I can help you get where you want to get to in life and and that's what this is all about I I want to come back to Miami and help build a culture and help build men I want them better than when they came in University of Miami. Not only do I want them to be great football players, I want them to be people of the city, people of the community. I want people to say, not only is a great football player, he's a great individual. That's what's most important to me. And that's the message you're gonna hear me saying to parents. It's gonna, you're gonna hear me saying that to high school kids, kids coming on recruiting visits, when we visit and sit down with them, I want them to understand that this isn't just about football, what we're trying to do at the University of Miami. We want to build men. It's it's a different culture than when I came in college. And it's a whole different world out there for these young men. And it's you always have to remember one thing, and I say this in pro football. Yeah, they're they're millionaires and and coming in pro football and in college they're big time recruits, but they're still young men who need some guidance, who need to know that people care about them, and they're more than just a football player. I know you're going to play football. I, I'm not worried about the football part. But I want you to maximize all your potential. And, and that's what this is about. You go to all the universities, mm-hmm. um, all the best ones in the country. You, you scout mm-hmm. all the players, and you come to Miami – um, where does Miami need to get better in terms of personnel, though? Like, you know, you're sitting at the NFL draft this year and yeah. nobody's getting drafted. Yeah. Um, where does Miami need to get better from a personnel standpoint? I think we just have to do a better job of the total evaluation and evaluating what what type of players fit for our culture. You know, we want kids with tremendous upside, we want kids with great minds, kids that want to get better, kids that are totally committed, and kids that are willing to get more of themselves. Because if you're willing to get more of yourself, you're willing to do whatever it takes to win. And you know we have to do a better job of developing players and 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 
you know, finding those kids who have the right DNA to be Miami Hurricanes. When Butch Davis was here and he recruited some of the best teams in college football history, he had a protocol Mm -hmm. for every single position um, that kids had to meet to be recruited by Miami. And uh, there's a science to recruiting. It's not just... I mean, if if you're going to win over the long haul with sustainability, you have to develop a process for recruiting and what type of kids fit in your program. Um, I think you'll see across the nation, Alabama's the teams that win for a long time, you can identify their teams based on the players you see on the field. In the NFL, when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're, they're always going to be good on defense. They recruit and evaluate a certain type of kid to play on their defense. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs at wide receiver, you have to have certain criteria to play for them at the wide receiver position. And if you can identify what type of players you want, you can. it's much easier to find those type of players than to just random, randomly say, we're just going to recruit kids. You, you know what I mean? The New England Patriots have a style of playing. Um, when you recruit players that fit your process, you have a much better, better chance of sustaining success for a long period of time you've been in nfl front offices for more than two decades now um coming back to miami why miami why right now just felt right um i've always had my eye on miami watching from a distance never expecting any of this to happen i never expected to be university of miami GM or any other position. It, it was brought up to me a few years ago, but it wasn't right a few years ago and it wasn't Manny's fault or anyone's fault. It just wasn't right at that time. And um, how the chips have fallen, Miami's dedication to getting the program back, and just not the part about winning national championship, but building the infrastructure to sustain success was more important to me than saying, we're bringing you back to help with a NAS championship. No, it's bigger than that. In order to get to that, in today's football, you need a you need a infrastructure. You need a base to start from. And I think right now, with the things we've got going on in Miami in the future and where we're heading, I think we're building that base. We're building that foundation to go forward. You and Mario Cristobal have a relationship. You've known each other yeah. for a very long time. Uh, when I say Mario Cristobal, what comes to your mind and why do you want to work with him? Total dedication, totally committed to football. That's why. Um, work ethic, uh, accountability. That's what Mario is. And He's been around great coaches, Nick Saban. You know, he's been around winning coaches, and he understands what it takes to win. And Dan Radakovich has been around building a winning program. I just thought it was a great combination. It aligns with who Alonzo Highsmith is. Yes, everything. Um, You know, I'm a pretty outgoing guy, and I like to have fun, and I do, you know, I'm, I'm an approachable guy, but when it's time for business and time to get the job done, the task at hand, I'm all business and I want to win. I, the winning, losing has never, never been part of my culture. I haven't been around it very often. And it's all about winning. I'm all about winning. You're the final piece to the puzzle for Mario, but he has spent the last six months putting a staff together. Um, to my eye, it's absolutely unbelievable, the group of men and, and women that he has pulled together here to be part of this Miami football program. Uh, when you came in to have conversations, your impressions just on the staff that's been put together? I know Kevin Steele. I know Charlie Strong. It, I know most of the coaches on their staff, so it's almost like a homecoming for me a little bit. And I used to talk a long time with Charlie Strong when he was at Texas. I used to talk a long time when I was with Kevin Steele when he was at Baylor and and in the other places he's been in the college world. Um, you know, college coaching is a six degrees of separation. So you know somebody that's connected to somebody who knows somebody. 
and it's just like that in the coaching world. So, you know, I don't know Jason Taylor personally. I know who Ed Reed is personally. Um, I know Coach Fields, a tight end coach. I know um, – uh, Mirabal, the offensive line coach. I, I just know everybody. And the new D line coach, I knew him at Tech when he was at, when I re- re- scouted him out of, the, out of uh, the University of Texas. So, I mean, it, it was a great thing. Um, it was a perfect situation for me, and it made sense to me. All right. So, you got a ton of packing to do. You got to get your butt down here to Miami. Uh, you're expected in the office, I think, next Wednesday. Um, so, so best of luck with that and uh, getting all your stuff packed and, and, and the move. And looking forward, obviously, to many, many more conversations as we move forward. And everybody's thrilled to have you back at the year. Yeah, you know, and, and like the last thing I'm going to say is this, that it's not about me at all. It's about the program. It's about these players. And um, my goal with Mario is to help make these players better people and great football players. That's, that's it. Nothing else. All right, so looking forward All to right. seeing you down in the 305 next week. All right, take care. All right, Alonzo Heisman, right. everybody.